Hi, this is Mickey Geek and I'm Dan, and it is finally time to add remote boot release. Nice. Okay, so this is kind of a side jag from the soft top replacement, which is uh, I have a... Where's start? <laughs> this car did not originally come with central locking. Um, I got a OEM unit and I have a video on fitting it and adding that. What that doesn't get you is the remote boot release. Uh, the guy at MX5 Bits uh, was kind enough to give me a remote boot release, but there were no cables to carry the signal. So whilst I've got it partly apart, I'm running some cables uh, down the bodywork. And what was interesting was that there's actually already this plastic conduit, which for mine was already empty, that runs along the trim and out the other side. So I've just fed a set of wires through. You can kind of see them poking out there. So I'm just going to pull those up and round just so that they're in place and that will be useful later. Okay, so there you go. Uh, it comes out the conduit under here, up the side of this trim panel and then in over the top and into here. And you can see this is where I added the OM unit and I've got a few spare uh, outputs that are necessary to run to the back. To bring the wires back into the boot where they need to be, I just fed a piece of string through on this stick going all the way through to that hole, which comes out right here. So now I can tie the string, the wires to that string and pull them back through. Ta-da! Just before I put everything in the car and wire it all up, I wanted to check for my own sanity that I did understand the wiring on this relay properly. Uh, so basically what we have here is these two pins, I believe, are the control circuit. They have a, a resistance between them when there's nothing connected. Um, and so at the moment I have those wired by these crocodile clamps to a 12 volt uh, power brick that's just by providing that, so that's off at the moment. And then this wire and this wire are basically the circuit that gets connected. And they are currently hooked up to the multimeter. So in theory, when I turn on the give a 12 volt signal, the resist resistance between those two pins should drop to zero. Excellent. So what that means is that one of these gets to be ground, probably blue. One of them becomes the signal wire from the uh, keyless unit. And then one of these gets to be constant 12 volt, probably this guy. And one of them gets to be the output 12 volt to the solenoid. Okay, so now we've got all the bits in place. So this is the uh, boot catch with the solenoid. Uh, the micro switch is a straight replacement to the existing one. Then here is the feed to the solenoid. So we've got ground and the switch live. So switch live to here. Ground is actually shared with the ground for the control thing of this as well. Doesn't really matter. I could pick ground up from the from the chassis right here, but I did run three cables from the front, so I'm going to pick up ground from where I have a ground pin at the front, um, along with constant live and signal live. So blue will be ground, red will be constant live, and uh, yellow will be the signal line. So I'm just going to crimp a couple of bullet points onto here. I use bullet connectors again here as I did with fitting the main unit. They're pretty quick and easy to do. So I'm just going to get those crimped, then we'll uh, yeah move to the front and do the rest there. So here we are back at the front of the car. Here are my three wires that we ran through. I've just crimped little sockets on the end of this. Here's the unit and I left myself helpful little uh, marked uh, <laughs> mark labels for what all these different things are. So here's the ground that I didn't need before, but I'm just going to pick up off of that for our purposes. Uh, this guy is the boot signal. And then I've made myself a little Y split connector to splice into the constant 12. Let me just plug that in now. Right, all connected up. I'll tidy this up in a minute. If we... Uh get a successful test. Let's go back to the boot. So 
So here we go. In theory, when I hit this, we should see an actuator. Or not. Hmm. Nope. Just to kind of sense check that things are going to work, I brought my 12 volt supply. It is providing 12 volts to the relay signal and constant live, and it's providing ground to the solenoid. So when I switch this, that activates. Okay, so first attempt didn't go quite right, and I figured out why. So I pulled uh, voltage, signal, and ground from the front of the car. And, well, I made two mistakes. One, I thought that between signal and ground would give me 12 volts. It doesn't. It needs to be between signal and constant voltage. And so you feed constant voltage to both of these two lines, which makes sense. Um, the other problem I had is that the constant voltage I tapped into from the front was only actually 9.4 volts, which is not enough. <laughs> I'm not quite sure why that is. I would have thought it should have been 12 everywhere. Uh, however, the antenna has a constant 12 volt, so I have tapped into that constant 12 and run that in. So I'm now using this split connector to run 20 vo uh, 12 volts into each of the... Um, input lines that require it, signal line comes in on the yellow and then the switch 12 goes into there. So now when you press this it actuates the, the thing. So now what I need to do is take the, the old one off, put the new one on, tuck all the wires away, job's good. Un. <laughs> just required a little bit of actual belief. Right, so let's do that first. So you go back in like that, and you sit in like that, and the crank on, I guess, comes. Just give it a check. <laughs> yeah. Let's just make sure that I did, did reconnect all of the other points of opening. Nice. Well, I hope that was useful for somebody. Uh, it's nice for me to finally get this sorted. Uh, it's a, a luxury to be sure, but it's nice to have that option. Um, so, yeah. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Thank you.